Hey, Dental Nachos crew, we are here talking about job finding tips and how the coronavirus crisis has affected our awesome dental students and dentists-to-be. So I wanna to welcome to our panel who we can talk to today. I want you to introduce yourself, tell us where you are in this dentisting world and the biggest challenge you're facing now in your life. It could be you can't find good snacks. It could be I've only been wearing sweatpants and I gotta go back to jeans. Could be I don't know how to if I'm gonna be a third year or not. So let's start with our upper left corner. Bilal, introduce yourself to the group and share with us uh, some things about yourself. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Bilal Chaudhry. I'm a current D2 and rising D3 at NYU College of Dentistry. I'm originally from Toronto, Canada, and I'm very happy to be here. Um, one big challenge that I'm facing right now is that throughout uh, D1 and D2, I'm struggling to learn kind of the business and finance aspect of dentistry. So I feel that this time is kind of a blessing in disguise where I'm focusing yeah. on not just webinars, reading, and kind of focusing on the business aspect of things. And as you said, I'm worried when I'll be a D3 because you're supposed to see patients in July, but we'll see what happens. Sure, yeah, dependent. And you're at NYU, right? Yes, NYU, yeah. Awesome, Bilal. Thanks for sharing. Below, we'll go below Bilal to uh, Becca. Hi, uh, I'm Becca Sirota. Um, I'm also a D2 at NYU College of Dentistry. Um, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, which, I, which uh, is where I am right now. And uh, so some challenges that I've been facing, um, just uh, getting the hang of kind of this new form of studying and, you know, taking exams in this completely new format. And, um, you know, most upcoming D3s are kind of studying for the boards right now. And so to kind of like stay in that mindset of being at home for the most part and focusing in the way that, you know, we're used to being in the library, we're used to being in the coffee shops and kind of just recalibrating the way that we study to be uh, the most efficient. Yeah, that's a good point. We've lost structure to our day. And I'm joking, yeah. you know, like, you know, wearing sweatpants 24 seven, you never know what you're doing. Laying on the couch, for sure. for both. And it, it is odd just not to walk yourself out, go somewhere and come back. And I am here quarantined with my family, which is awesome. 24 seven family time with a toddler. Perfect, <laughs> relaxing, don't have to drink at all. But it also shares like <laughs> nothing happens outside of your core group anymore. So you don't have any good stories. Like remember 10 a.m.? Yeah, I was there. We were sitting together. So <laughs> challenge too. Uh, yeah. And we'll go to our so you guys know the dental nachos language. A baby age dentist is a bad. You guys are bads in training. You didn't even get up to zero to two. So up to zero is finishing dental school. And now we have our most senior member of the group. Uh, Jessica, introduce us to uh, introduce yourself to the group and answer those questions. Thank you very much for inviting me here, Dr. Goodman. My name is Jessica Wynn um, from the University of Minnesota. Um, just like Dr. Goodman said, I am a D4 that graduated virtually last week. Um, so one of the challenges that our class is having, or me as <clears throat> um, a rising future dentist, is trying to transition between licensure. We um, at the University of Minnesota have not taken our licensure exam yet due to the stay at home. So we're just trying to figure out um, what to do in that process. So I want to stick with that. Really, thanks for sharing, Jessica. And I do want to share with you, and you've had a really good attitude. And I, I want it's it's okay to say that stuff sucks. It is okay. Doesn't mean you have to be depressed about it, but it does suck that you didn't get a chance to do your guys' graduation. And I mean, I'm a creative problem solver, and uh, you know, you have to live in the reality. You can't go back. But maybe if like CE becomes legal again in person, you guys can create like a a, a CE event for your class where you guys all get together and kind of experience that graduation. You know, you won't get everybody to do it because once everybody leaves, you know, wherever you. you are. Which school did you graduate from again, Jessica? I just want to drop that one down. University of Minnesota University School of Dentistry. Um, awesome. So tell us, I mean, the licensing part, I took some calls this weekend and mm -hmm. you can talk about learning about business, doing class twos also, but none of it matters unless you actually are licensed to be right. a dentist. And yeah. What's holding you up in the licensing process now? Are they not offering the exam right now or do they have plans to offer it? Right, so um, I know that for different states, they have, uh, some of them are updated, some of them are still waiting for the government. However, University of Minnesota, we're waiting to um, take our exam. We have it scheduled for June 5th until June 7th. And so will some students, uh, some of my classmates, they're not um, going to be licensed in Minnesota. So because of that, they may need to do the live patient's exam. So right now we're working together, um, helping each other and collaboratively trying to like help each other find patients, live exam. Um, but because I'm going to be licensed in Minnesota, I will be taking the mannequin portion. So the, I was hoping, I was hoping that this would end live patient boards, but it hasn't totally, yeah. right? Yes, unfortunately, no. And I, I feel like that's because um, other states and other um, 
like some of my classmates are in the military. So some people have different specific requirements where they can't end the live patient as much as we would want that to happen. Which is totally insane. I mean, it's, it, it's dentistry. It's an embarrassment to our profession that we have this. I would like you to tell me another profession that has to do a live patient exam to get their license. I will wait. There is no other profession. Only dentistry have this horrifically unethical and embarrassing mm -hmm. thing. So we're mm -hmm. trying to train young people. I mean, Bilal and Becky, you get there one day, but Jessica, like, hey, we want you to go out. We want you to treat people right. We want you to make good decisions. Definitely. You're a healthcare Definitely. provider and we want you to be unethical. Okay, got it. I want you, we want you to be ethical. Got it. Before <laughs> yeah. doing that, we would like you to bribe some people to show up at an exam, please, to do work on them. We like to bribe them. And oh, if they don't show up, you can't get your license. It's so nacho nuts. I will do anything. There's some great people. Craig McKenzie was the, uh, as the president, he was a, uh, someone I knew in Philadelphia. I will do anything to create awareness on this because we should end it because it's just a, it's also doesn't even make sense because we don't have live patient crown preps in the NERV, but we have a live patient class three. Why is it okay? Plastic crown, live class three. Why do you have to do scaling and root planing and not an extraction? So even if, if someone's out there as a proponent of live patient exams, it doesn't make any sense because we don't even get tested on all the things that we need and the mannequin is much better. So I'm hopeful for you guys there. Thank you. So, I totally agree with your words. <laughs> thanks guys. And you guys can share um, in the chat if you have questions. So one of the things I'm going to talk about is BTLing yourself, which is bring yourself to life. So if you are getting a job, you got to BTL yourself. You got to BTL yourself through video. So even though I live in front of this zoom place, I sleep on the floor. This is where I sleep. And I'm used to this at a certain point, You've zoned out eight or nine minutes. So what can you do to BTL yourself through the power of video? And what are the three C's? I wrote them down. Everything that matters needs a system. Everything matters. So one thing that you guys should all do is get this book, The Checklist Manifesto. It talks about making checklists, five to eight points. Amazing book, Checklist Manifesto by Atul Gawande. And even me, who lives in front of the Zoom, I made a checklist for myself. And I don't know if you can see it. It says the three C's for 1.30 p.m. This is real life, making yourself stuff like this. So when you go on a job interview, you have a few talking points. So I'm going to share with you the three things that you need to know from every job interview, some of the business part of dentistry uh, below. But the three parts to the three C's to success are communication, clarity, and confidence. How you communicate with this practice owner, how they communicate with you, the clarity you get on this job. How many days is it going to be? Is there a guaranteed salary? And the confidence that you have in wanting to walk in and work in this place. It doesn't mean you're totally confident, but you need to be able to answer those questions. Are we communicating well? Do I have clarity? And am mm -hmm. I confident? If anyone out there has been on a bad job interview, like a bad date, I don't know if you have been on a bad date, share with us some of the things that happened for us to learn so we can learn from you guys. Let's see a Q&A here. Uh, I'm a soon to be graduating D4 and my associateship has been changed or been lost with uncertainty on what patient care will look like. Are other D4s experiencing similar issues and how have you been networking during this uncertain time for dentists? So really great question on the chat. So uh, Jessica, what have some of your classmates been doing to network during the pandemic? I would say um, pertain to network, they're reaching out to other classmates. For example, the D4s that have graduated last year. Um, I know that due to this COVID-19 crisis that we have, um, some people have told me where they had a deal, but because of the hiring freeze, it didn't happen. So I, I feel like networking is key in terms of um, contacting other people. For example, over the weekend, I had recently helped uh, one of my colleagues where um, I'm trying to get them in connect with the ones that I had applied to um, and then just trying to email and trying to just help everyone out. Cause right now we definitely need to just work together and then, you know, just stay positive. Like you said, um, in addition to just helping each other out. And it's all about how you can BTL yourself through video back in below if any of your classmates or upperclassmen shared any good networking strategies that they've had or challenges during this time. Yeah. Um, I've had the opportunity to talk to many D4s currently right now. They said that, Social media is another way that they've been using to network and through webinars as well. Mm -hmm. Anytime they see a dentist uh, putting up a webinar about how to, about hiring, firing, communicating your contract and things like that, they've been joining them, reaching out to the hosts and stuff like that. And also just live Instagram, live Facebook webinars and stuff like that as well. 
And this all falls under, hear the words, say the words. So even though, Becca, you might not be applying for a job yet, you're thinking, oh, good. it's like the test thing. You know when they say there's a test a month away and you're like, that's never going to happen. And then the night before, you're like, I should have started earlier studying. Well, think of that test like your life, and it's okay to hear these words now. Becca, have you had any experience with the upperclassmen and any of their networking during this time? Not with the upperclassmen specifically, but honestly, from my own experience, uh, reaching out to professors, they've been a lot more receptive and uh, quick to respond just because they kind of do have a lot more time right now. Um, so maybe for them to just keep that in mind that people, you know, do have a little bit more time on their hands. So, you know, they will be more receptive to you reaching out to them right now. Yeah, those are all great points. And I do these really, really super inexpensive coaching calls. I've been doing them where I basically give D4s new dentist, any is a treatment plan, like a little treatment plan on what to do. And some of the highlights are you got to make videos of yourself and get them to all the dentists in the area who, where you want to work. So if you want to work in Pennington, New Jersey, where I'm a dentist and you are Becca and you're a fourth year or GPR grad, or you're a third year wants to work there, contact those offices and don't be weird about it. But you're a dentist. You're going to be weird because we, we used to be normal, but dentistry made us weird. So you can't be like, Hey, are you hiring? Bad question. You have to be like, hi, my name is uh, Becca. I'm going to be finishing dental school and moving back to this area. I would love to talk to the owner of this practice. And here's the key phrase, learn more about what dentistry is like in this area. Learn more about what dentistry is like in this area. Very non-threatening. Everybody likes your baby dentist. Everyone hated dental school or they, they got through dental school. They remember that time. So then say, what would be the best way for me to connect, not call, not text, with this dentist so we could talk more. And it's a lot, I've given you lectures for years, finding a job in dentistry is a lot like dating. You talk to someone who's in a relationship, but their best friend just broke up with their significant other. They say, oh, my friend needs an associate because they say my friend down the street, his associate's going to Perio. That's exactly what happened to me. So getting your face out there during this virtual time is key, but you have to be comfortable bringing yourself to life through video. We're gonna take a look at some of this now and just how video helps you share your story. So it doesn't have to be always about a job. It could just be about a good story. So let's take a look. So I made, I want people to, I want people to come to our Kiko Summit virtually, okay? It's free <laughs> ball, no refunds, right? Dennis, they like a refund on free. It's kind of their thing. Like, I didn't like this free course. I'm like, well, it's free. You didn't. So I said, how can I share this story? So I try all these different mechanisms. One is me. Then obviously I cheat here. I got a baby. I'm co-owner of a toddler. But the point here is let's listen. This is 31 seconds of a story, okay? I want you guys to tell me, Becca, Bilal, Jessica, and if you're on the Zoom chat or on Facebook Live, what's one piece of information that stood out to you from this 31 second video? Just something that got lodged in your brain. There's no test, there's no right or wrong. Just something from this video. Let's watch it together. I'm going to share my computer sound and try not to. So again, this will be considered as an engineering control. There are administrative controls that we need to look at via OSHA. So what is being a dental student? I'm working without my dental assistant here at Nacho headquarters. I need Ariel and Amanda. All right, let's go back. So the whole key is sharing your story. I'm just sharing a 31 second story, but doing this is a lot harder than it looks. I've been practicing for years. I've been a dental speaker for 17 years. So for you to get practicing, sometimes you have to do the video 13, 14, 15 times to get that right one. But tell me what stands out to you. Being a dentist is difficult. The only thing more difficult, being a dental student. On Sunday, May 31st at 11 a.m. Eastern, Dental Nachos is hosting the Dental Nachos Kiko Summit, Keep It Kind Online. We're gonna have amazing speakers on personal and professional development, managing stress throughout your dentisting career, and where to go when you need help. Just text Kiko, K-I-K-O, to 55444 to join us, or visit dentalnachos.com. Great, 31 seconds. Bilal, what's one thing that stood out to you? Uh, the biggest thing that stood out to me was honestly the aspect of helping dental students and dad. Well, I got so excited to froze the Zoom. There was so much excitement there. Uh, sorry, Bob. Tell, so you said helping dental students and dad. Yeah. That stood out to you. Becca, what's yeah. something that stood out to you? Uh, your your daughter wandering around kind of lost like a dental student. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, that, um, that, uh, so Karen Cortell Reisman is one of my speaker coaches. It's, a, it's probably be a big investment for a dental student, but I recommend any dentist, you're a young dentist out there, a medium age dentist, 
Karen Cortell writes me an email, salsa dental nachos.com. I'll connect you with her. I've been a speaker for 17 years. I spoke on implants, spoke on practice management. I needed to speak on transitions. And I, I did coaching with her to help me make a presentation. And she shared all the tips. And some of it's glue and Velcro. So Drew is some of the Velcro. So I tricked you, Becca, in a good way. Not, <laughs> I didn't trick you. I shared the story. You're young. You're lost. Look, I don't look young and lost. So I showed someone who looks young and lost, and that just helped share that story. Uh, Jessica, what stood out to you? Well, besides how cute uh, um, Drew's pigtails look, I wanted to say like that you highlighted three main points of what Kiko Summit was about, so that it was like positive and encouraging, and that's nice because that way you're able to convince other people to be a part of it. Yeah. All great ones, and there's more in this. So I ask you for one, but if you're watching on uh, Zoom with us or Facebook Live, uh, it also has every detail you need to sign up. You don't need any more details to sign up. Text Kiko to 55444. It has the date and it has when it starts. So it's not too many details, it's not not a detail. So that's something that I'm trying to share a story because there's 25,000 dental students and there's 150,000 dentists. So there's 175,000 people who can show up on Sunday. So what do I do to make that 50, 500, 5,000? Now let's take something that will help you in the job world, this 29 seconds, and show you what you can do this afternoon or five minutes from now through a video. Now, every video, like this is the key, this is a good example. Uh, you guys can still see my screen. This is a 31 second Drew video, and now here's a 105 second Paul video, which has even more details. So you send the Drew first to her interest, then maybe you wanna talk about your experience with implants. But let's let me show uh, one of my best videos here. So if you guys invest best 29 seconds of your life, it has nothing to do with finding a job, it has everything to do with sharing your story, okay? Wherever you are, where you wanna to say to someone, this is me, this is how you contact me. This is what I'm interested in doing. Obviously, this is not new. They've done this with dating. Has anyone seen the real world or those matchmaking shows? They say, I am a guy who lives in New York City and I like Pilates. Do you like Pilates? That's their dating thing. So let's watch this together. And the Zoom audience here, feel free to share. Uh, reminds me how much I miss Starbucks. I like that. Now, yes, for sure. Starbucks, you can get takeout now. Yes, I, I, uh, I did. So let's look at this. Now, what happens is, do you guys ever see your instructor do like put in a crown in two minutes and you think that's easy and then it takes you an hour and you're like, that's because they've done it so many times. It was hard for me when I first did these videos. I wasn't born knowing how to do this stuff. So while this looks confident and easy for me, it's going to take a while for you guys to get it. But if you master some of this or become proficient, this will help you with patient communication. This will help you with hiring associates. It'll help you finding a job. This will help you share your story. But wow, you want to know about business. How about this? You make, a, you make a, a video. Here's how we collect money in our office. First thing we do is we offer a payment and full discount. Second thing is care credit. Third thing is payment over time. A 30-second video like that that you could share with your team, they can use over and over again. You're automating yourself. So same deal here. Tell me what stands out. If you were, watch this. Play the role of someone looking for an associate. You need an associate after the pandemic. Here's some weird stuff that's gonna happen. I totally get D4s, GPR grads, baby age dentists have it the toughest of everybody, I believe, because they had jobs and now no one knows if these jobs are gonna be there because we don't know how many patients are gonna come in. Let me just tell you a story that you can relate to. Uh, Bilal, Becca, or Jessica, have you ever gone for the free pizza lunch and learns, just to get the free pizza and not listen to lunch and learns. Who's done that? I did that, right? So, uh, yeah. the pizza is at one o'clock, okay? One o'clock. Now, Jessica, you're doing a denture trying, taking three hours, we don't know why, no one knows why. You're doing a bite rim. First visit, we just look at the bite rim. We don't put it in the patient's mouth. Now, Jessica, if you know the lunch and learn with the financial planners at one o'clock and there's free mm -hmm. pizza and you didn't bring lunch and your instructor, doesn't check your bite room till 103 and you get there at 110. Will there be pizza left? Depends on, uh, no, maybe not. Maybe not. The, no. The kind nobody likes, right? The, the yeah. one kind, So there isn't enough. So the job market is like that with patients. I have three associates. 
Dentistry has been shut down. New Jersey's looking to see emergencies. We all need to be understanding. Unfortunately, owners, I'm an owner, we just don't know how many people are gonna come back and wanna eat pizza. But what you guys can do is look for interesting opportunities because there are going to be associates who can't come back to work. And what is one of the number one reasons an associate, a young dentist, not in maybe a baby age dentist, let's go with a toddler age dentist or a child age dentist, a young associate, most often is gonna be a female one, will not be able to go back to work because of this reason. Do you know it, Bilal? Uh, maybe because family? It's on, you're on the right track. What's specific, yeah. Becca or Jessica, do you know? Pregnancy? Pregnant, yeah. Pregnancy is part of it for normal, but a pandemic related reason. So nobody's talking about mm -hmm. this, I don't know why. The reason why this female, likely female, could be male, cannot go back to work is because her children are not in school. Mm -hmm. And it's illegal to leave your kids home. When it's not illegal, let me know, I'll leave them home. But I can't, so what happens is, and it could be, it's, it's 2020, it doesn't matter who's married to who, but dentists tend to have a job that goes on the back burner for someone's business job. So if the spouse has a job working for a big company and it goes back to work and the dentist is a three day a week associate and the two children need to be stay home, it's likely that that dentist will need to stay home with them and that will be an opportunity for you to fill in a job. This is gonna happen over the next two months over and over because nobody's talking about that school's not going back in session. How are assistants gonna come to work? How are hygienists? How are associates? So it's a really creative way. So if you, were, you guys have to hire, this is your job. You have to hire someone by June 20th to work in your office. Tell me what stands out from this interview that would make you lean forward and wanna contact me. Hi, my name is Paul Dr. Nacho Goodman. I went to Penn Dental School and graduated in 2002. After dental school, I did a GPR residency at Albert Einstein where I learned how to place implants, do endo, get faster with restorative procedures. I would love to find a job in the Philadelphia area and I would love to meet you. My cell phone is 267-896-1942. My email is paul at dentalnachos.com. Please feel free to reach out to me at any time. That's 28 seconds. Jessica, what stood out to you? Um, even though he's you, I will try to talk to in a third person, but that he's organized, detailed, knows what he wants. I like that, perfect, that's good. Becca, what stood out to you? Yeah, it's, it's concise, it's engaging, straight to the point, gives all the information you need. Great, uh, Bilal? Yeah, I feel like you de uh, definitely demonstrated the three C's, which is communicating with clarity, uh, exuding confidence as well, and just mm -hmm. kind of making sure that you get your message across in that short amount of time. So I, so, I see, I, I, I watched this app. I haven't, I don't have the courage to do it yet, but uh, have you watched uh, any TikTok videos over the pandemic and watch them? You know that those videos took like 114 tries to get right, you know? So who cares if yours takes a while? It's free video, put your phone, it doesn't matter if you're holding it yourself. I do like when you use a lavalier mic like I have here, but you don't have to have one. You can just use your Airpo AirPod. Make this video, put it on YouTube, send it to people, do whatever's comfortable. If it's not comfortable to give out your own personal cell phone, just give out your email. Give out a Google Voice. I'm not telling you to get text from across the country, but I'm telling you that this is a great way for people to know who you are, what you do, and for them to lean forward. You make a link like this, and you send it via email, you send it via text, and that's a great way for people to lean forward and, and reach out to you. Um, so those were my two major... Because let me just see if there's anything else I want to share here before I jumped off screen share for you guys. So you can tell I make videos all the time for all different reasons. Make yourself a YouTube channel like this as well. This here, so if you're watching this here, this is a two hour video that I did with the idiot, the author of the Idiot's, job, the Idiot's Guide to the Perfect Job Interview, crunching your dentisting job interview. If you want to watch this two hours because you're looking for a job, really, 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 great piece of content that you can get for free from us. And just wanna see if there was anything else I wanted to share with you guys in the job market. Ariel and Brandon can, and Amanda can put in their emails on this. Perfect, so uh, we're focused on pandemic challenges, licensing, finding a job, the business aspect of dentistry. Share with me guys, I mean, Bilal, if you represent, and Becca, other D2s out there, are there any other concerns other D2s are having that you'd like to talk about? Uh, 
um, yeah, one of them being definitely is clinic because we're all anxious about finally applying our skills to clinic. And now it's what now we're thinking about what's going to change, right? How, what are we going to do with PPE? Are we going to all still be jumbled up in clinic? Are we going to have to go at different sessions now? So I guess the biggest thing is revolving around clinic and how we're going to deal with patients now and what new guidelines are going to come up from dental schools. And, and what's the leader, what happens here and, and Becca, you guys are in the same class, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. What's the leadership? Like I'm into kindly annoying people. Are they giving you guys refunds or credits? I think they should, but where, where's that stand at your school? Not really any refunds, unfortunately. I mean, to me, that just drives my brain crazy because how can you yeah. not deliver a service? And I think you just need to constantly document with your leaders, whether it's a school visit, because people tell you no to stuff all the time and you have to approach it from a different angle and there's power in you guys unifying and it just makes sense. I mean, I'll just share with you. So I have a membership club. You want to know about business law? Well, the membership plan or the membership club is like, Let's say a cleaning exam and x-rays in my office each year is 600 bucks. Ariel's a hygienist. So you come in twice, see Ariel, x-rays, cleaning, exam, any emergency care, any emergency exams, not care. All that equals like 650 bucks. I say, you know what, Jessica, sign up for my membership club. It's $450. Here's how this works. You get your two cleanings, your two exams, any x-rays you want, any emergency visits, and you get 10% off all of our services, a great option for people who don't have insurance. So now I have a 12 month membership program. I try to be a good customer service book, setting the table by Danny Meyer. And he's the founder of Shake Shack, one of our favorite places with the moderators, great customer service. So what am I gonna do, Becca? You're on that membership plan. We've been closed for two months. I'm gonna extend it by two months. So now if it was to end on December, you can use it in January and February because I was not available for you to get your teeth clean. So somebody's got to help you guys. I don't know if it's an attorney. I don't know if it's someone else, to get the dental schools to, to like my mom used to say to us, uh, act right. Because like, why don't you kids act right? Uh, because it just doesn't seem fair because that clinic time, when, are you, when were you supposed to start clinic, Becca? Uh, in August. Yeah. And when, when is that still on track or no one knows? We, we still don't really know. Yeah. Uh, so who, who is the leader? Is there like a class president that has, has the job of trying to do this? Or is there anyone in the school that can help you guys? Uh, well, Bilal's actually our class president. Oh, nice, Bilal. <laughs> if he wants to address it. <laughs> I'm, even uh, Bilal. I'm good with kindly annoying words. Uh, so <laughs> if you need some help writing it, Jessica, in your school, see fourth years in this, you know it's interesting. Fourth, and I had Randy and Alana on last week who are my awesome friends. I actually mm -hmm. think dental fourth years have the toughest road but the easiest next step, because I feel like fourth years, like keep all my money as long as I could get out. Right. Because you're at this Pretty gate much. and you just want to go, but what are they doing in your school, your, your school for the next, for the D3s? For the D3s, they, um, this week they have, I believe, um, well, no, actually in, in the entire month of May, they have a lot of exams. So they're not going to give the clinical fees back or anything like that. It's taking a lot of like didactics again. And the unfortunate thing that I really like appreciate with the D3s is they're all willing to assist us when we can figure out when to go back. Um, but the unfortunate aspect is we have Wednesday evening clinics and Saturdays that they now have to like extend clinic time to get their requirements done, which is really unfortunate. And, and, and it's, it's, it, everyone is in this annoying boat together, but we got to try to share in the annoyance. I mean, this is what represents what it's like to do full contact arts and crafts as a dentist all day. There's Mr. Grumbly guy. And I feel like that's what we're dealing with now. And I just think mm -hmm. we have to share taking care of Mr. Grumbly. So he even talks, share <laughs> taking care of it because it can't just be all on one group, just the students. And I think you guys mm -hmm. just have to constantly get your messaging on right and say, doesn't this make sense? And I, mm -hmm. I and it's super tough because the other part of all you brought up was, are patients going to come back to the dental school when you need them to come back? That's the same issue with us. There's two reasons why people are not going to come back to the dentist. And there are two fears, fear of safety, fear of spending money. And fears aren't facts. Dr. Phil said that. And, and, we, and we shouldn't use fear as a bad word because fears prevent us from getting in trouble all the time. But what are the responsible concerns and how do we get our messing out? Sorry, Mr. Grumbly doesn't stop after this. Um, that's okay. But uh, I think that's, it's, if you get ahead of annoyance, one of my things, getting ahead of annoyance and whether that's finding a job. I mean, for example, if people are here watching saying, 
okay, I'm interviewing for jobs. What's a red flag for me to hear? Here's a red flag. Um, why do you need an associate? We're really, really busy and we want someone to help us with endos and endo and extractions. That may sound like a good answer, but you just graduated from dental school or residency. Can you do all the endo and extractions? So you really have to just get people to provide you clarity, whether it's with going back to clinic or, mm -hmm. or finding a job. Um, I wanna check, there's a couple of Q and A's here, but my team, for some reason I can't see the Q and A. So for Amanda and Ariel, I know we answered yeah, one Yeah, I can, I can. Um, sure, share one with me. Clarity, confidence, and. Oh, I see it, okay, good. That was a great question about soon to be graduating D4, virtual connections. I hope you guys are making your BTL videos. If you send your BTL videos to me at salsadentalnachos.com, Amanda and Ariel will send you a prize. See, it's always like bribes and rewards. So salsadentalnachos.com. Um, so as I wrap up, I want to give you guys a tip that you can use for the rest of your life. It's a great word tip. You can use it for the rest of your life, but especially when checking hygiene patients. So a lot of times you can't get out of the hygiene room because the patient is talking about their cat, they're getting a new cat, the other cat died, and you're like, man, I want to get out of this room, but I don't know what to say. So the way to seem likable and credible is to say this, and I'm going to say it to you guys. So if I said, Becca, do you have any other questions you would like to talk about? What are you going to say? No. Right. Because I'm using my body language that I don't really want you to ask a question. And it might not be my genuine feeling, it's just I got something going on. So this, it's always your words and your body language, but your words can overcome body language sometimes. So this is what I'm gonna ask all three of you. What other questions can I answer to help you with? That's the, what other questions can I answer to help you understand? What, what other questions can I answer to help you understand more, or help you understand about your gum tissue, your teeth, how to pay, dental school loans, your job. So I'm gonna ask you guys what other questions or what other question can I answer about to help you understand more about surviving and thriving after this pandemic? Well, I'll let you go first. If you don't have a question, that's cool, but it's the what, not do. Uh, what do you believe the outlook of dentistry is going to be like? Because with other webinars I've been watching, I've noticed that obviously with uh, new PPE requirements and um, air filtration requirements and things like that. If dentistry is still going to be the 30, 40 patients a day or 20 patients a day that you're going to see, if there's going to be time split up in between them, like what's your, what do you believe the future outlook of dentistry is? Really excellent question. And, I, and this is, fits with JBR. So my grandmother thought I was the most handsome boy in the world. But if I tried to be a model and an actor and I said, I'm, my grandmother told me everything, I was handsome. I would not succeed in life. So I need someone to be realistic. My parents might be like, Paul, you're good at sports, but you're probably not going to play in the NBA. Okay. That was a realistic way. I did want to play in the NBA. With dentistry, I'll liken it to this. Right now, it's like it's torn its ACL and needs to rehabilitate. So we talk about the next six months, the next year, and after that. Over the next six months, I think for sure, capacity is going to be lower. Less money is going to be sent on dentistry. So this is realistic. So we need to prepare for this. Less capacity, PPE challenges, and a tough rehabilitation. The positive thing is, I mean, if we were just very selfish and we only cared about dentistry, I'll tell you why it's weird to be a dentist, okay? Becca, um, if you were my dentist and I was sitting in the hygiene chair uh, and you were going to check my teeth, would you hope that I had 10 cavities to fill? Uh, I, I mean, I guess technically, yeah. Yeah. So that's how yeah. weird it is. You either have to, if you don't hope that and you hope I don't have cavities, then you also hope you don't have a job. It's very challenging to be a dentist. But what's great about this is nothing's happened to teeth. People still have challenges, still need implants, still need their mouth checked. Maybe it's a great opportunity to redirect the conversation into overall health not necessarily trumping up the periosystemic oral thing link. That's not my thing. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm just talking about it's good to bring your mouth in for service more often, maybe more preventive stuff, but nothing's happened to teeth. But I do think Bilal, the next six to 12 months are going to be challenging no matter where you are in the nacho plate. But much like a round of golf or a marathon, you got to run through that mile and to get to the next part. So really good question. Becca, how about you? What question can I answer for you? 
Um, I'm wondering if you think the pandemic is going to affect the types of jobs that new graduates are choosing, um, something that has more of a perceived security, like DSOs ver versus private practice, things like that. So great. Oh, another awesome question. And I think right now, one of the things I said in the beginning of this is, so if you guys were all my classmates and I like failed the practical, but Jessica got a good grade, even if she's my friend, I'd be like, I don't really like Jessica. She got a good grade. I got a bad grade. It's very hard, right? That's happened to you. You've looked at your friend and been kind of upset something good happened to them because something bad happened to you. Dental school, terrible place. But in this scenario, we all got the same bad grade on the test. And also DSOs in private practice, they got the same bad grade too. So right now, if anyone can confidently say, I have a full-time job for you, ask a lot more questions, DSO or private practice. I do think it's a time for new grads to get multiple part-time jobs like it used to be when I graduated. There was no DSOs when I graduated. I did get to work for my dad, so I didn't experience it. But many of my awesome friends had two or three jobs, two days, two days, one day. With the DSOs, it became more full-time. Now, diversifying the jobs you take may be a huge benefit. So I think that, I think, yes, it's going to change. There's going to be less full-time jobs. Just because someone asks, gives you a piece of paper, even a contract saying, I'm going to pay you $125,000 a year. If they don't have that dental work to share, they're not going to have it to pay you. So it's really eyes wide open starting now, but really great question. Uh, mm -hmm. Jessica, we'll finish up with you. Great. Um, I would say <clears throat> because of the pandemic, um, I, and then, you know, you had discussed the child care that someone answered in the chat. I would say trying to manage like the staff's expectations or concerns because we're trying to right now reassure everyone about that um, responsible concern of safety and PPE and there's an overwhelming knowledge. So it's, it's hard to figure out like who to listen to. Do you have any advice on really that? Awesome question. I think right now we have to be comfortable not knowing something I'm comfortable mm -hmm. doing, but I'm not your ordinary dentist. I, mm -hmm. I am okay not knowing a lot of dentists, they really need to know. A lot of people need to know. But if you, the worst thing to do is if you don't know the answer, just say you know the answer. It's a terrible, if someone says to you, how long, it, will I need a root, will this filling become a root canal? We're going to find out and see. What happens is as we take mm -hmm. out the cavity, it goes in the mm -hmm. inner part. That's when a root filling is needed. But if you say no and then it needs it, so with this scenario here, the best thing to allay patient's fear is to be genuine and honest. Really good question you have about safety. You can make a video like this. Really good question you have about safety. We are working really hard to stay up to date. One new thing, one new thing we're gonna do is use face shields. One new thing we're gonna do is use face shields. Other stuff we're gonna add, we're gonna see with our OSHA director. It's four, five, six sentences to be clear, to communicate and show confidence. But don't say you know an answer to something if you don't. People really respect you if you do that. Now, you don't have to be like, if someone's like, what's a crown cost of this office? I'll be like, I don't know. Be like, really good question. I would wanna know that too. We have someone who does this. I'm gonna introduce you to Kate. See how different that is? So you're not being dishonest. You're just, you're just sharing the information in a way that makes you seem confident, communicate well and give clarity. So awesome question, awesome time with you guys, Bilal. Uh, how do people reach out to you if they want to follow you on Instagram or anything like that? How do they reach out to you? Yeah, you can reach out to me on Instagram. It's uh, B and then my last name, C-H-A-U-D-H-A-R-Y 14. That's my Instagram handle. Feel free to DM me any questions, even pre-dental, dental students, just your experience, just so we can collaborate and network. And thanks so much for having awesome. me. Talk yeah, to you I love that. I love that vibe. The more we bond together, uh, awesome. Uh, Becca, how about you? Uh, my, my Instagram is uh, nothing but the tooth, um, underscore between the and tooth. So same, same as Bilal, feel free to reach out um, and just chat and connect. And thanks again for having me. Awesome, Becca. Really, really awesome. And how about you, Jessica? Um, the best is email. Uh, N is in Nancy, G is in girl, U is an umbrella, Y is in yes, 1716 at umn.edu. And again, it's been a pleasure. So thank you so much for having us. Awesome, guys. You guys are awesome to do this. I know it takes some courage to get on here. We have some free prizes in the Zoom. We have one uh, last awesome question. Rising D4s who are concerned they're going to graduate with less experience. It's a totally valid concern. Totally normal to feel that way. The best way <laughs> is to JFO, J just find out with your school, present your concerns and ask what they're going to do about that and figure mm -hmm. out how they can do it. I think the bet, if people, see when you're your own business person, I own my own office, I run dental nachos, there's good parts and bad parts, okay? Good parts, I don't have to ask anyone, bad parts, I'm in charge. 
But if someone made me in charge of the dental school, first thing I would do is lower all the fees for the treatment immediately. Just for the next six months, make them lower to get people to do it. Yes, I know they have budgets. Yes, I know this, but you have a lot of customer students who need to do the work. So maybe suggest to your school, is there a way that we could lower the fees for a short term to get people to come in and do more work? I think that that would be a good, good idea. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna stop the video. I'm gonna share a video at the end. You guys can talk on the Zoom chat. You guys can start your video and Ariel and Amanda, you guys can just stop the meeting in a few minutes. Zoom, not to Zoom people. Thanks for being on with us and have a great uh, rest of your guys' day. Thank you. Great one. Thanks. Thank you.